Welcome back. We're coming at you live from the AWS Santa Clara Summit in the middle of the expo hall. My name is Nikki, I'm a technical evangelist at AWS. I'm joined by my lovely co-host, co AM. No, this is not an episode of AM and Nikki, sorry to disappoint. But we are here to talk to you about our favorite topic, developer tools. Developer tools. Arun, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, well my name is Arun Gupta, I'm a principal open source technologist at Amazon. And? And um, so what that means is that I work around all different open source technologies that are done at Amazon. So I work with a lot of service teams, helping them define what their open source strategy is. So, and developer tools is something close to my heart that I want to feel developers pain before they do so that we make their life easier. I love that. I would like you to make my life easier. So Let's before do it. we talk about today's lunch, um, for those that are not aware, what is the AWS Toolkit? Yeah, AWS Toolkit is a toolkit that Basically, we are launching it today, and as part of the launch, this is a toolkit that allows you, simplifies your developer experience in different IDEs. Um, so if you are a developer who wants to build applications using AWS services and products, install that toolkit in your favorite IDE and get started with it. What might you say if you were surrounded currently by two .NET developers and maybe you're a Java developer? Yeah, what might you say? Do you have you any say? experience for that? By the way, we're blocking all exits here. <laughs> yeah, I, I realize that, you know? Java sandwiched by .NET, so yeah. I get that. Um, well, um, so the AWS toolkit, the beauty of this is this not only works for IntelliJ, you know, which is where you can do for Java, it also works on PyCharm, so not just you know, .NET and Java, but Python as well, and VS Code too. So it works VS for a code. wide range of developers. Ah, did you say VS Code? Yeah, I did, did you say, say VS like, Code. Repeat that one more time. Right. VS Code, IntelliJ, and PyCharm. So what was launched today? Please tell us. Yeah, so this morning, uh, Werner in his keynote announced the general availability of the AWS toolkit for IntelliJ. And what that means is, you know. the developers in the house. Yeah, exactly. So the idea is that, you know, you have an IntelliJ idea, you download, you know, the ID, you've been using it, your favorite ID, you go to the marketplace, you install the toolkit, and you start building your AWS applications with that. That toolkit has been in developer preview since last reInvent, but today is generally available. That means go ahead, use it you know, for all your applications. Is it open source? It is can absolutely. I, can well, I contribute to the toolkit? Well, I think that's the best part. That's where what brings me in there, because this is fully open sourced. So you know, there's a GitHub repo that we can link in the show notes, yeah, essentially. Yeah, we'll link it in the chat. And then uh, that's where all yeah. the source code is available. We love pull requests, we love issues, we love to hear from you what's working, what's not working, and that's the main essence. So you mentioned a couple of other IDEs that uh, the toolkit works for, so let's just go through the list again, in case you missed it. Visual Studio, right? PyCharm, VS Code, now IntelliJ. IntelliJ. Did I miss one? No, that's it, four of, wow. four of them, yeah. So AWS toolkit is really, again, if you were to think about your it, is a simplified toolkit for developers to build their applications using AWS products and services using the IDEs that you love and you use every day. So I know there's a lot of Java developers out there that love using IntelliJ. How are you making it easier for them to, say, deploy serverless applications? Yeah, I mean, uh, so AWS Toolkit, the way we are looking at it is, is the way to build applications using AWS products and services. That's sort of our long-term goal and thought process. As a first step, what we're doing is we are letting you build serverless applications. So essentially, you know, I mean, your developer experience is, if you are an IntelliJ developer, you open up your ID, you go to your preferences, you say install my plugin from the marketplace. So now if you are an IntelliJ developer, that's a very normal terminology for you. Yeah. So you just install the plugin, and the plugin is there, then you build similar the application. Similar to Visual Studio a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so very similar experience in the usual toolkits. So you know, depending upon the IDE that you're using, we are going to where the developers are living and giving them the first class experience of their IDE. I love that, even though I'm not a Java developer. Hey, hey JetBrains has a writer, uh, a, a writer, a product called Writer that is for .NET devs too. Ooh, I gotta give that one a shot. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm too attached to VS Code right now. I love VS Code. It's like an addiction. Yeah. You got me hooked. It's my job. Well, you, you, you're gonna try IntelliJ. You're gonna get hooked too. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> hey, Am, you wanna see a demo? Of course <laughs> I wanna see a demo. Yeah, let, let, let's let your demo talk me into this. Yeah, let's do that. So. Um, what I'm going to show here is, you know, I have IntelliJ 2018.3.5. Okay. And this would work with is that 20... the most recent version? Well, so this is a version which is from last year. Okay. But the most recent is 2019.1. So anywhere from 2018.3 to 2019.1, it. it would work. 
So there's some backward support there. Yeah, That's absolutely. Great. So now the usual experience is, as I said, you go to IntelliJ, yeah. you go to preferences, and then in here you're seeing plugins, okay? Now I can search for, for example, AWS. So I have the AWS toolkit already installed for me. So let's search it again. So if I go here, yeah. I have version 1.2 already installed. And I can say uninstall it or disable it. Super easy. But that's not what, what I want to do. Right. Now, if you don't have this toolkit installed, then what you'll do is you'll go to Marketplace, and then you'll say search for AWS. It'll search, and then that thing will come up for you. And then you can actually install it accordingly. Awesome. So um, sometimes you know it takes a while where you, you, know, you have to click on show all for new and updated, and then the toolkit will show. But essentially, let's say pick any random toolkit. If I pick, say, Git Toolbox, you'll see a green box here. Click on that. Click install. It installs the toolkit, and you restart the IDE and ready to roll. I don't want to interrupt you, but Shames Tick here on Twitch is asking the really important questions. Does IntelliJ have dark mode? Oh, yeah, I think yeah. That, I, it that does have. That is definitely yeah, yeah. an important question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very That's Absolutely. part of my convincing process. I got to see this thing in dark mode. No, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, 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 we'll show that maybe you know, if we All have right. time. OK. Yeah. And see, that's the beauty of it, the customization that right. developers can do whatever Good they want to do with it. So I guess you know, once you have the thing ready, okay. then what you do is then you say, OK, now I want to build a serverless application. Let's okay? do it. So I'm going to create a new project here. I'm going to count the clicks. So I'm saying AWS, by default, is AWS serverless application. Beautiful, and and easy. remember I said, it, at this point, we are building only a serverless application. But in future, there will be other products and services that will be exposed using okay, this so one this as well. So this toolkit will be expanding to other services and products. Right now, Wait, it's port serverless. What other services do you need other than serverless? I'm going to agree with AM on that one. True, yeah. yeah no, I mean, I'm happy with it. serverless, yeah. That's all you yeah. need. Well, well I mean, I a lot of our customers use containers, for example. Oh. So that's something okay. that we can expose over here. Okay. You know, that's If you are a Java Fair developer enough. or a .NET developer, how do I containerize this thing and deploy it on, say, EKS, for example? It's a good thing you're not building this for us, because we would just tell you to stop there. I agree. <laughs> well, you are not my audience anyway. Those that's guys right. are my audience. That's right. Good point. So, All right, so now two clicks. So that's it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name, say, um, Hello Summit, OK? Sweet. So that's my project name. Now see how everything else is done automatically yeah, default. Maven. So if I show you here, now as a Java developer, you can choose Maven or Gradle-based Gradle. build, whatever you want. There is a project SDK. It, if, if it's pre-configured, it'll show up here. If it's not, then you can configure it here. Now, in this case, what I've configured is Amazon Coreto, okay. which is our downstream distribution of OpenJDK, and that's Got what it. I've configured here. Yep. And then it brings, gives me some other values, and that's it. Three clicks. That's it. It creates my project here. That was amazing. So now, How many clicks to deploy it now? Well, let's take a look at that. So now, here is my project. Okay, If I look at it, now, in my project, this is my source files. Yep. In my source, and you can see we are following the TDD a methodology. A test file for you. Very important, actually. You know, I mean, that, we want to make sure that you're building good code. For test-driven developers. Yeah, it's a TDD, very important. I can't admit that I'm one of them. <laughs> well, we can always learn something new. Yep. So here is, you know, I'm showing you a default request handler that is made available to you. Okay. And so this is a sample code. All it does is when you invoke this Lambda function, is going to spit out back a hello world to you. Cool. Now, one of the things that I need oh, to yeah, do. Oh, yeah, right there. Message, hello right. world. Exactly. So here it can say oh, hello world. in my location? World. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, it can spit out a bunch of data for you. Now, one thing that I need to do in order to be able to deploy it, um, you can either configure that as default, but you need to make sure that this is added as a Maven project. So I'm going to click on Maven here, and I'm going to click on plus. Ah, OK. And I'm going to go to my workspaces. And I say, hello, Summit. And I pick my Palm XML. And I say, open. And now you've told IntelliJ that this is a Maven project, so to build with Maven. So I'm saying that in my serverless project, there is a Maven project. And so build with Maven, and, and this and is a Maven what project. What is Maven for the non-Java developers watching? Maven is a build tool. So essentially, you, know, you have written your source code, and you write your palm.xml in which you write down what is my build script really look like. And then you say, go build it. Yep. And it follows the build script, basically. Got it. So I got the Maven package here now. Okay. And see, as soon as I made it Maven, yeah. it says, oh, it's a Lambda function now. Oh, wow. It, automatically it recognizes it. automatically. That so, little Lambda, it's so nice. Now, multiple <laughs> ways by which we can run this function. I like that. Isn't it? Cute. It's a nice touch, the icon. It is a really yeah. nice touch. Well, we got to see how this looks like in dark background. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? So now, 
what I am ready to do, I am ready to run this test locally. Well, one couple of more things you want to understand from the background perspective. This is using SAM CLI. SAM CLI is a CLI, yep. again built out in the open source. So you need to say, this is a Mac. So you got to say brew install SAM, AWS SAM CLI. Yep, you got to have the SAM CLI installed. And we're using version 14, 0.14.1, so it's a particular version that is required. If you have a Mac, you can install SAM CLI with brew. That's right. Yeah. So you need to have brew. And what I'm going to do is, I'm a developer. As a developer, I want to test things on my laptop first, OK? So I'm going to click on this Lambda function here, and I'm going to say run the local app. So what it's doing now is, it's going to run the Lambda function locally. Lambda function locally. Ah, it's using SAM local. There you go. So That's it's using cool. Sa it's SAM so local. So this means I can now breakpoint on my code uh, using SAM local. Exactly. And the, the way this is done is, you know, we just download a Docker image. So you need to have that Docker running as well. Yep. It downloads that Docker image, runs that container, mimics the, land, uh, the Lambda runtime for us, and then it says, hey, go run that Lambda function in that Docker container. So you have to have SAM CLI installed and Docker as well. Right. That's so, actually a, uh, a community-maintained Docker image, too. It very well is. Lamb CI? It yeah. very well CI, yeah. 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 It's really so, neat to yeah. see our community give back, too, exactly. right? Exactly. I love it. Now it's saying, hey, by the way, you need to give me some input. So all I did is empty parentheses. And bam. Now I say go run it. And at the bottom down here, you can see it's saying running SAM build. Is it going to show the output? It will show the output. So we'll just wait for a second. So you know, it's, we can click here. It's running the build. And Whoa. then the logs show up here. Yep, I'm familiar. So see here, we were talking about the LAMP CI build. So this is sort of my Docker container runtime. Spinning up the Docker container. And now it tells me, hey, you know, hello world. Hello world. And There's it gives my IP coordinates. Super cool. So literally, you know, in a couple of clicks, you have created an application, enabled that was it as like a Maven, four clicks. and then say, run it locally. Amazing. So you can very easily get started with this. What about deploying it? Yeah, well, this is local testing here now. Yeah, so I've locally tested my Lambda. I'm ready to put that in the cloud. There you go. Let's do it then. Now what? So now I'm going to say, create new AWS Lambda. Well, before we can do that, actually, so yeah, let's go here. You see your AWS Explorer window here? Yeah. Now, in my case, I have already pre-configured it. But what you need to do is click here. And if you have AWS CLI configured on your local machine, it will pick up the connection Default settings region. from that. Yeah. So in this case, for example, I can see the credentials. And I have two different profiles. Yes. It automatically picked up that profile for me. So if you select the other profile and there's a default region associated with it, it will automatically change? It will. It will. And cool. in this case, I've also see, you can also see that my default region is US East 1. That's so good. I have like eight profiles on my computer. There so. you go. So it, but we really want to make it simple and easy for developers to pick a particular profile and pick a region. So in this case, we have picked up the defaults one. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to create a new Lambda function. OK, so now, now we're this time we're going to the cloud. In the cloud. In the cloud. So what I need to do here is I need to give my Lambda function a name. So I'm going to call it as, say, Hello Summit. And now I can give a description. Uh, this is Java, so it's a bit memory hungry. We're going to give it like a one gig, one me one, um, meg one gig of memory here. And um, it needs an IAM role. So by default, you can actually give it a Lambda basic, basic execution yeah. role. You can enable X-ray too. Looks like uh, we can point enable X-ray as well. And I can actually give a S3 bucket because the way this thing works is it's using Sam, SAM. SAM CLI to package up the zip. It uploads to the S3. Bucket. Then it says, using that S3 bucket, I'm going to run the function using this IAM role. It's a typical um, workflow of SAM, if you're not familiar, is that SAM will help you package it up, put it in S3, and then Lambda will use that S3 source to run your code. But see how it is all simplified here. And also, we're really Super looking at easy. developer workflow. And we can, of course, enable X-Ray. You're really talking me into Java right now. There you go. So now, click on Create Function here. So this is going to upload the function. It's going to run everything for me. And my function is going to be created up in the cloud. So really what I quickly, um, is there a page with more information about the IntelliJ toolkit that our followers yeah, we're running and viewers out of time. can go to? Yeah. We're running out of time here. Yeah, so I mean, uh, qu really quickly, if I were to show you, you here, it. the function is created. That was so fast. If I refresh it here, I got my Lambda function here. Now I can right click here or say Hello Summit. And then I can run this function. Oh, nice. Wow, now, that's really nice. One quick thing that I want to also want to show here is I have a template.yaml here. Now, remember, SAM is nothing but a transform on top of cloud formation. formation. So what which I'm is showing just you infrastructure as code. Exactly. So what I'm showing you here is the SAM template. Because here, 
what you can do is you can add your API gateway, you can add your DynamoDB tables, and then I can right click on this here, and I can say, deploy my serverless application. That's great. So when I'm running locally, it's using SAM CLI. When I'm doing, um, running the Lambda function, then it's using AWS SDK. And when I'm doing this, it's using the cloud formation. Thank you so much, Arun, for showing us the new IntelliJ AWS toolkit. We are signing off. We will have more content for you coming soon. Bye, right. everyone. Stick around.